Hi, it's me JD and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the bullet journal plan with me for the month of April. Where I live, we've been having a lot of rain and so I wanted to focus on the positive and therefore we're going with the theme of unicorns and rainbows. I put down a piece of masking paper for my cover page and then I'll begin ink blending some Distress Oxide ink in rainbow colors. If you're new to my channel, then you should know I'm not your typical bullet journal artist. I prefer to apply card making techniques to my bullet journal, which includes stamping and ink blending. If you've been to my channel before, then welcome back. It's good to see you. Always love a repeat customer. Again, if you're new to my channel, just watch out for fun techniques and bad jokes. I'm using oxide inks because they blend so smoothly even on this bullet journal paper. And I'm sure you guys are curious, but there is no ghosting and no bleeding. Ignore the ugly drawing. Anyway, it's time for one of my favorite parts, the peel reveal. This part just never gets old to me unless I mess up and it bleeds through. But in this case, I have a nice crisp line. I'm going to stamp and die cut uh, some unicorn parts to my cover page. I thought I'd change it up and add some dimensional elements to my bullet journal. And this stamp and die set, um, you can stamp some parts and die cut some parts out. So I thought you know, this would be the perfect one to use for my cover page. It's the trendy unicorn face that you see a lot in cakes and party decorations. And I thought it'd be a really fun element to my bullet journal. As I'm assembling his, her, his or her, whatever, unicorn's face to uh, the page, I'm remembering my mistake from last time. I'm definitely leaving room for the title of the month. The stamp set also came with these little stars and I thought they would make a nice finishing touch to add some more whimsy and magic to this cover page. I stamped the unicorn horn and the stars in this gold metallic ink, which in real life adds a nice shine to this page. On to the calendar page. This page always gives me a nice month at a glance. It also fulfills my like OCD-ness in drawing a straight line. I don't know, there's something relaxing about drawing in a, on a dot grid piece of paper and then connecting a, a straight line to all the dots. I'm going to color in my headers and footers and then write in all the numbers to the days of the month. Once that is done, I'm going to decorate the empty spaces of the calendar page with some stamps of rainbows. These layouts and pages are totally taking me back to uh, my elementary and early middle school days of Lisa Frank everything. I remember having the binder, the stickers, the notebooks, the folders, everything had to be this rainbow, the holographic leopard print, unicorn print, and it was fabulous. To save me from hand cramps, I'm going to use this handy calendar stamp and stamp uh, the calendar on all of my weekly spreads. For the first weekly spread, I'm going to take this giant unicorn stamp, which I have used in videos before, and it's going to be the star of this weekly spread. This unicorn is going to radiate a rainbow coming from it. And if you're going to uh, try to replicate this in your bullet journal or any other paper craft project, you should know that you should clean off your ruler when you uh, line up a marker to it. Otherwise, it might bleed and spread and it, go, it would go on your next marker. But thankfully, I'm using Tombow markers, which if you scribble on scrap pieces of paper, it will clean itself. If only my room did the same thing. I apologize for my hair getting in the way there. I'm trying out some new uh, recording angles for my videos. After drawing and coloring all of my straight lines, it's time to color in this mythical beauty. I'm going to use the same rainbow colors as I did on the rainbow. And this is why I stamp. I could never in a million years draw a unicorn that looks this pretty. I do like to hand letter though, and that's why I uh, make it a point to practice my hand lettering with each weekly spread. Next, I'll write in the days of the week, just keeping it simple because there's so much going on on this page already. And it's on to the next weekly spread. 
I like to do a different layouts for each week of the month. I feel like it gives a nice change uh, to my pages. And plus I just like this crafty me time anyway. I drew some clouds because that's the only thing I can draw, kind of. And then I stamped some more unicorns. The clouds are gonna serve as my days of the week. I then added some rainbows to connect the clouds because I mean, if I'm gonna go for rainbows, I'm gonna go for rainbows, you know what I'm saying? It's like more cowbells? No, I need more rainbow. For me, rainbows inspire a lot of creativity. You know, I get the question like, how do you use your bullet journal? Do you use it for um, your everyday planning? And truthfully, I don't. My bullet journal is more my creative bullet journal. It's where I keep, you know, future video ideas, future card ideas, um, just uh, things, make, making notes of what inspires me or what kind of trend I want to use next. That's why some of my spreads are a little extra, <laughs> if you would say, because I feel like it would, it helps me keep my creative mojo going. As functional as Google Calendar is, it just, it doesn't do the same thing. For this next page, I'm going to stamp this really fun rainbow. I found this rainbow stamp that lets you stamp each color of the rainbow. Could I have hand drawn these rainbows? Sure, but would it look as symmetrical and even? Absolutely not. As I said, I'm also a card maker, so my supplies do dual purpose. Plus, I love stamping with these inks. They always give a nice, crisp, uh, even, cover, even coverage image. And so any excuse I can get to pull them out, I do. <laughs> and now I'm continuing with the basic uh, days of the month. I'm just gonna scribble those in here. And then I felt like this page needed a little more. So I'm gonna add some more unicorns if there wasn't enough already. I'm gonna stick to the color scheme I used in the previous unicorns of this cotton candy pink and this light blue. I think that's a really fun uh, color scheme for unicorns. It's very My Little Pony. This whole monthly spread is basically a throwback to my childhood. <laughs> Add in some Cabbage Patch Kids and an Easy Bake Oven and that's pretty much my adolescence. Since this spread is very much a hodgepodge of like randomness and random floating ring rainbows and unicorns, I'm going to go with a much more streamlined look for this next spread. Well, first I'm gonna start off with some hodgepodgeness and randomness, and then it'll all come together because I'm going to draw some vertical lines to make a vertical weekly layout. And you would think I learned my lesson from the first weekly spread, but I don't. <laughs> Clean your rulers off in between uses. Do as I say, not as I do. Clearly. It's a good thing I'm not a perfectionist because I would have been through like five bullet journals already <laughs> ripping out pages. But to me, bullet journaling is not about perfection. It's about finding a system that allows you to be productive and organized in your own special way. Some find that through minimalism, some find that through having 20 different unicorns on their pages. Whatever floats your boat! There's no right or wrong to bullet journaling, except the fact that I forgot to leave a space for my monthly header. Whoopsies. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to coloring in these unicorns. I think out of all of the weekly layouts that I have done so far this year, my brain responds the best to a vertical layout. I like that I see the entire week at a glance and it's kind of like seeing the big picture of things. Could I do a vertical layout each and every time for all of my monthly spreads? Sure, but that'd be boring. So I like to change it up every week. It makes my life seem more interesting than it actually is. I'm gonna add a drop shadow because things just pop when there's a drop shadow. For my last weekly spread, I'm going to go with a more muted palette of my colors that I'm using. And that's because I'm going to draw a giant rainbow. Each color of this rainbow is going to represent a different day of the week. This is why I needed more lighter and pastel colors so I could easily write on top of this rainbow. I almost want to not plan anything for the last month of April, just so I can keep this, um, this spread intact and still looking pretty. Now I'm just finishing up this weekly spread and then we'll do a final recap. 
this month has been so fun to do bullet journaling for. On one hand, I hope the rain just goes away, but on the other hand, if it continues to bring rainbows like these, then I guess we can handle a few more showers. Anyway, thanks guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.